Hello, uh, and welcome back to 1061, where we're going to be talking about function pointers and lambda functions. Uh, this should be a fair bit shorter since I'm not doing a full lecture here and just going through the exercises. So without further ado, uh, create a farmer class that has methods to print out different activities, such as harvest, reap, and sow. Uh, write a hurry function that takes the function pointer of an activity uh, as a parameter and prints out that it is uh, doing the activity Quickly. Okay, so here's going to be our first uh, little practice with function pointers. Uh, so over here in our videos, we are on week 10. Function pointers and lambda functions. Okay, and here, uh, I think we're going to code all this with, uh, with a CPP file. Uh, so this is exercise one. Here's what we have to do. Now we'll see how much I can get done in the time I have before, uh, the, in the time I have, and then uh, maybe we'll come back and we can polish this a little bit, make it a little neater, maybe put the farmer class in a separate file kind of thing. So let's make a farmer class. Uh, our farmer class is definitely going to have some activities. We can always give some you know, attributes later if we think they're necessary. We're definitely going to have harvest. Uh, we're going to have reap. We're going to have so, and uh, we're also going to have a function called hurry. And it's going to take as a parameter a function pointer. Uh, you know, always mess up the, the formatting for this, but well, we'll write it, and then if I'm wrong, I can always fix it later. Um, so the idea here is that I want to um, write that I am doing a function quickly. Um, which function depends on the parameter uh, f. And so we're going to have a uh, void. I think I'm doing this correctly, f. Uh, we'll see if this is the right syntax. I think I have the wrong syntax, but I'll, I'll just double check my notes and we'll, uh, we'll find out together, won't we? Uh, uh, okay, no, I've, I've put, the, put the wrong formatting here. Let's go check our notes and then we'll, uh, we'll know for sure what the right way to write this function pointer is. So. In our notes, function pointer, let's see. Uh, oh, the, the star comes um, before the name, I think. So we're looking for some, uh, is that right? Let's double check here. Um, so, uh, something, oh yeah, okay. So it's void, then in parentheses, star f. Void in parentheses, star f, uh, and I think I might need a second set of parentheses. Let's double check. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is absolutely hideous um, monstrosity, at least in my opinion. Um, so what's going on here? Basically, I wanna pass a pointer that references one of these functions. And these functions we're gonna make really simple. Um, we'll uh, just have them print some stuff uh, using namespace std be a little lazy there. Uh, you know, we'll say whoop, harvesting dot dot dot. Uh, and then the other ones similarly will be the other things, but reaping and sowing. Reaping. Sowing. Can always make these functions more interesting later, but um, the idea here is that what I want to do is to output I am quickly and then call the function f. So this way, if I call hurry and I pass it the parameter sow or reap or harvest, specifically a pointer to those things, it should say I'm quickly harvesting or so on and so forth. Uh, let's see if that's the case. So main. Uh, now, I need to get a pointer to one of those um, functions. Uh, so I could mess around with the syntax and hope that I get it right, or I can take kind of the lazy shortcut, which is to use the word auto. Uh, this automatically detects what the type is. It is very bad practice, uh, and I'm only showing it to you because in case you see this, it's good to know what it is. But auto is going to auto assign what the type should be for our function pointer, uh, and it's going to be so. 
Um, note right here that I am not putting the parentheses here because I don't want to call the so function. I just want a pointer to so. And now I can do something like hurry with the function pointer, and this should do what I want it to do. Let's find out. Uh, okay, what did I mess up? Uh, oh, I forgot the semicolons. <laughs> of course. Semicolons, semicolons, semicolons. Try that again. Uh, so was not declared in this scope. Right, because this is uh, part of the farmer class. I need a farmer. Um, so this uh, will need a farmer f, and we're looking at f dot so. Let's try that again. Uh, oh, is this still not happy? Uh, cannot convert from the type. Oh, okay. So here's where our type is getting really messy. Um, Right, so here's, okay, here's what's going on. Um, because these are methods that belong to a class, I have to do a little bit more work as opposed to just saying that it is a void function. Because it's not just a void function, is it? It's a void function that belongs to the farmer class. So I have to make things a little messier here. Let's say void farmer colon colon, I believe, is that what I'm looking for? Uh, oh, actually, no, it should go in here. I think that might be it. Let's try this one. Uh, right, and then it's um, f arrow because f is a pointer. Uh, is this right? No, it doesn't quite seem right. Uh, okay, no, f is not a pointer. That is wrong. What I said is incorrect. Let's see here. Must use dot star or arrow star to call the member function in f. Okay. Uh, dot star. Does that mean dot star? It's always fun exploring the syntax of how this stuff is supposed to work. Um, is it this? Perhaps this is what I'm looking for. Nope, let's put it over here. You can tell it's been a, been a time since I've used function pointers in C++, huh? No, it's still angry about that. Um, pointer to member function. And it's still having trouble converting, too. Um, <laughs> cannot convert from or so. What if I make this a pointer and I say f arrow so? Let's see if that fixes the other bug. Uh, nope, still very unhappy. And I can't do that either, right? So was not declared in this scope. Hmm, I seem to run into a bit of a pickle here, haven't I? Um, so, sorry, pull back to the, uh, the question. Um, now I wanted to take a function pointer. I don't really care what kind of function it is. So can I do this or will it be very angry at me? Let's find out. Auto F. And then pass it our function pointer. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm not supposed to do this unless I'm using more modern versions of C++. So that's good to know. Um, so is still not declared in the scope, so it doesn't like doing this. Uh, maybe it wants the address of so. Is that what the problem is? No, it still doesn't know what that is. How about the address of f dot so? Uh, maybe I meant to use the arrow. Sure, I did mean to use the arrow. Why not? Oh. This keeps getting more and more angry. Forbids taking the address of a member function to form a pointer to member function. Maybe I've written too difficult of, a, of, a, of an exercise here. Um, that, that shouldn't be the case though. I feel like there should be a way to do this. Um, okay, so let's, let's look at what we have available to us. See, the, the trick here is like a lot of the, a lot of the code examples here um, have the uh, the issue where you know we we pass there's a whole bunch of places where there's um, function pointers being passed around, um, 
but we're not actually passing a function pointer to a member function, uh, which gives us some additional challenges that I think are not present in the notes. I'm guessing it's not present over here as well. Uh, let's you know, take a look. Um, see, there's no classes here, so the class thing doesn't become a problem, uh, which means that we're gonna have to figure out how to do this, and I think that's fine. Uh, you know, it's good to try to do some problem solving together. Um, okay, I know how I do this in other languages, but C++ has its own little intricacies that make it particularly tricky. So here I have a void function, um, f, and it should say that it is doing something quickly. Now, um, yeah, so how can I pass a method to hurry that belongs to the farmer class? Because I think it's, I'm, I'm allowed to do that, I think. Can I do that? Let's, you know, let's ignore this for a second and see if I can compile with just the basics. Um, one thing that you really don't want to do too often is uh, try to compile a whole bunch of things and you never know what's actually causing the issue. So, uh, cannot declare pointer to a void member. Right, because I forgot the extra parentheses that go here. These parentheses are the ones that I would put in any parameters to my function, but these functions have no parameters, so these are empty. But they need to be there. If I don't have them there, the whole thing is going to be kind of angry. Uh, okay, so I can compile this and this seems fine. Now, here is my problem is I need to be able to pass this a pointer to a farmer function, which means I need to be able to get a farmer function. So I definitely need a farmer, uh, and I would prefer to have the so function. Uh, doesn't matter which one really. Um, but what I need is to get the address of this function. And I think that it's not letting me. C++ forbids taking the address of a bound member function to form a pointer to member function. Um, is there any way around that? Let's see. Sometimes you gotta resort to the unfortunate Google. Um, <laughs> so I'm trying to do what they're trying to do. Um, if you want to store a pointer, uh, okay, what is this doing? So here's some code that I found on Stack Overflow. Be very careful about taking Stack Overflow code. You never know what it's going to do. But um, so I need to tell the compiler that a class exists if I'm using two classes. I'm not using two classes, so that's not a problem. Um, no, this isn't even the same issue, because the issue that I have here is, um, oh, I guess it's similar. Uh, Hmm. What if I do this? Void farmer colon so. Here's what it does. Now, can I just give this so? I don't think I can. Well, maybe I can give it, can I give it um, farmer so? The address of farmer so? Ooh, interesting. When I want to pass a function pointer, I don't want the function pointer from an instance of that object because the error message that it was giving me was saying the address of a bound member. What on earth is that? When I'm using f arrow so, I'm using the so method that belongs specifically to our farmer f. Should use a name other than um, f, that's not a good idea. Uh, this is, um, this one is func and this one is, uh, Farmer. Alice is a farmer. Um, I don't want to use Alice arrow so because that means I'm referencing specifically the version of so that belongs to Alice. That's not what I want. What I want is a function pointer that belongs to all the, the so function, the, the so method of any farmer. I need the address of that because I want a pointer. And this will give me, uh, I think if I were to put the type in properly, it should be something like this. Void farmer arrow 
colon, colon, star, um, is this right? The, the, the type is always a, <laughs> it's always a messy thing to figure out. Uh, actually, I think it might be, uh, no, I think this might be it. Is this right? No, okay. Uh, no, the syntax of these is such a nightmare sometimes. Okay, uh, I want it to be, oh, I have to star the name, that's right. So the name is called function pointer. Um, void. Sometimes you, you just gotta, you gotta experiment and then eventually you figure it out. How about that? Is that right? No. <laughs> okay. So the notes say this is how you store a pointer to a function swap. That's a void function. The name of it is M and it stores this. Now I can make a void, oops. Uh, I can make a void function, void star f pointer. Is that okay? Uh, no, it's looking for a farmer star star. Okay, let's try this. No, it's still angry. <laughs> uh, what did I, what did I miss? Oh, I missed the parentheses. There are no parameters. Apologies for the, the working through this, but I feel like this is a good indicator of, you know, if you were trying to learn this on your own, you might run into all these same mistakes. So you get to watch me make them too. Okay, let's try this again. Hooray, I finally did it. And now let's hurry with the function pointer. Is that okay? Can I do that? I am quickly, oh, it didn't call it. <laughs> um, it's because I should call my function. Try that again. Compile. Okay. Uh, and now it wants. Um, I have to use arrow star to call it. What about that? No, it doesn't like that. How do I call this function? This? No, it's not, it's not this, because hurry doesn't belong to anybody. Um, hmm. I wonder if I have to have hurry as part of the farmer class. That might be the case. Void hurry. Should make these all lowercase would be proper. Void hurry. It takes this function pointer. Later we'll make this a little cleaner because oh boy is it hideous right now. Uh, and now this is farmer colon colon hurry. And instead of hurry, I can say Alice hurry. And instead of function, I can say this arrow function. Let's try that. The farmer class has no member called func. Uh, well, I, I know that. <laughs> um, star func? Must use dot star. Okay, what is the syntax for this? This arrow star thing with the parentheses after. This arrow star, and this surrounded by parentheses are on both sides? No, it's um this. 
Ha ha ha. I am quickly so. My goodness, what a what a you know mess of mistakes. But you know, it's I think it's good to show the learning. Uh, even though I could, you know, I can go back and you know re-record this video, make no mistakes. But is that actually as valuable to you? I would argue no. Um, now you can see all the the, the way that I um, processed figuring out all this stuff out. So now we have a solution for exercise one. I think I'll come back later to record exercises two and three. Um, but in the meantime, we can clean this up a bit, make it look a little nicer. Um, so first of all, okay, we have this hideous looking monstrosity a few times here, which really sucks. Um, what the heck is this? Well, this is our function pointer. It looks really awful because it needs to indicate a whole bunch of stuff to C++. The first thing is the obvious one. It's a function that doesn't return anything, so we call it void. Great. We need to give it an alias, a name. We call it func, so that we know that it's a function. We don't mix it up with something else. We also have these parentheses. You can't ignore these even though it looks like you might want to because they are small and significant and have nothing inside of them. Um, we could always add some parameters to this if we really wanted to, uh, to make it so that you know, you're reaping, harvesting, and sowing a thing. Uh, maybe we'll do that shortly just so that we actually have some, uh, some uh, indication of what these parameters are for. But anyway, in the meantime, we have nothing, which is fine. Uh, however, what we do have is the farmer class in which all of this is wrapped up. So if I want to, um, to call this function, well, it belongs to the farmer class and I need to specify that. Last but not least, I need the star here because it's a function pointer uh, and not something else. This is gonna be really annoying to remember all the time. So how about we get rid of it and replace it with something more intelligible? This is where we use the idea of something called type def. Type def is a special command that you can tell C++ to look for any indicate, uh, indications of the thing that shows up first, uh, and then just give it a name, which is much more easy. So I can call it something like void pointer. And now, instead of having this awful thing, I can just say void pointer func. Uh, also, it should be, um, I don't need the name here anymore. I think this should work correctly. Let's double check that I didn't mess something up again. Sometimes I do. Okay, I definitely did. Uh, what did I mess up? Uh, farmer has not been declared. Oh, well that's kind of annoying. Um, how can I type, I guess I have to do it down here, which is kind of annoying, because then if I do it down here, then it's not gonna know what a void pointer is when I try to find stuff in here. Uh, oh, such a, such a, you know, circular problem. Yeah, now if I now if I have the other problem. Okay, well, it looks like type def might not help us out too much here, mostly because I'm working with a class and that makes things ugly. Probably in other scenarios I might be able to get away with stuff like that, um, but because this is a very messy looking thing, uh, it looks like I might actually be stuck here, which is a little unfortunate, but there's not much I can do about that. Now, that being said, um, let's try to put something in these parameters to make it a little more you know spicy. Uh, so, how about we add a string crop to all of these? And instead of reaping dot, 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 we'll have reaping crop. Uh, I think I want um, end lines after these, don't I? Yeah, so let's add this. Get rid of the dot, dot, dots. Okay, but now I have to have my crop in here. Um, I don't think it matters if I declare it either way. It should work fine in any case. Let's do harvest. But now because I have a crop, I need to pass that as a parameter. And so that means that my hurry function is going to need to have two parameters. It's going to need to have the, um, the function, which takes a string, uh, and it's going to need to have the actual crop itself. So a uh, string crop. Uh, so here, you know, let's do pumpkin. Okay, 
Wait, what did I mess up now? Uh, I think I messed up one of the... Uh, yes, so this should be um, string. And I should check for those these things here. String. Um, and this should be a string. Got to make sure all of your definitions match. If they don't, things are going to be messy. Try now. Hooray. Uh, quickly harvesting pumpkin. OK, let's break down this like, you know, nightmarish code uh, into something intelligible. So we got our farmer class. Most of this is like something we've seen before. You know, got harvest, a crop. Output, I'm harvesting the crop. Great. Reaping the crop, same thing. So I didn't write the description here. That's OK. I can write it down here below. Farmer's sow method takes a crop and says, I'm sowing the crop. Great. Hurry. This thing looks like I made typos or something. What's going on? Hurry is a function. It belongs to the farmer class. And it takes as a parameter one of the other three things. It could be harvest, reap, or sow. It specifically is a function of the farmer class that returns nothing and accepts a string as a parameter. All of this must be present. If any of these things are missing, it'll all go kaput. Um, the star here indicates this is a function pointer as opposed to something else, uh, and it is called FUNC. We also need a crop. If we're gonna hurry, um, in this case, uh, doing something with a crop, we, you know, we need to know what crop we're gonna be working with. Now, how does the hurry function look? So we still have all this, copy paste it over here. Now I'm gonna write uh, that I'm doing a function quickly and which function depends on the parameter func. So I write down quickly and then here's this line. I need to call the function. In order to call the function there has to be a farmer who can do it. If I don't have a farmer who can actually sow or harvest or reap, you know, what on earth is happening? It doesn't make much sense. So I'm calling this using a farmer. Down below I'll do so using Alice. Um, and when Alice tries to hurry with the pumpkins, um, she is going to quickly, depending on which function I worry with, about, call that function with the crop. In my main function, I make a pointer that points to Alice. Um, Alice is going to, uh, we're also going to get a pointer that points to the harvest function, because that's the one I want to work with. Uh, and then Alice will hurriedly do that activity with the benefit of this is now, although I did, you know, it took me a while to write all this stuff, get all the syntax right, which I messed up several times, and you can see all the kinds of mistakes I made and how they might look on your computer if you make the same mistakes. The benefit now is I can really quickly have her do other things. So I can do stuff like, uh, you know what, function pointer, let's do um, farmer arrow uh, colon colon so instead. And now Alice, hurry. Function pointer, you know, um, wheat, why not? And now she is doing the other function with a new parameter. Uh, and I don't have to go and, you know, reference, um, I, I don't have to, um, like I can, I can switch around this function pointer to all kinds of different things, whatever I need to. Uh, and I'm still just calling Alice hurry function pointer every time, but I'm doing a different thing. Uh, and there's, I don't think another way to really do this. So uh, there's lots of um, applications for this kind of thing. Uh, I myself haven't, hadn't seen a lot of them until I started working a lot with mobile devices, where it turns out because your, you know, your phone, for instance, can do all kinds of different stuff, being able to reference all of its um, capabilities using pointers ends up being very important. Uh, and so having some way that you can effectively pass a function to a function is really what we're doing here, right? Um, is something that we haven't seen yet, and this is the way to do it. It is, you know, really <laughs> tedious uh, to write out properly, especially if you haven't gotten much practice with it. So I definitely recommend, you know, exploring a little bit of how to do this kind of thing. I picked sort of the messiest example possible. The, the notes for the course, as you can see, have much simpler examples, you know, where it's just a function uh, with some parameters, void or int or something. Um, not that much going on there, but in this example, you know, we have a function that belongs to the farmer class, returns void, accepts a string, like all the different components we could be working with. 
Uh, and so it's worth making sure that you're very comfortable with the syntax because when it comes to you know, test time, for instance, you do want to know how to write this properly. So uh, I think that's everything I want to do for the first exercise. Um, I'm going to come back in a little bit to move on to exercises two and three, but it is, um, this is, a, I think, a, a good start at the very least, and then we'll, we'll continue on in a bit. All right, I'll see you then. Okay, let's continue on with the next exercise. Write a method for the farmer where the user enters the name of activity and a number of times they want to do that activity, use function pointers to call that activity method the correct number of times. Okay, so we're gonna use function pointers to do this. You can obviously do this without function pointers. Uh, I think I want to point that out, but the, the purpose of this exercise is kind of to show that there are more than one, there is more than one way to do something. Uh, in particular, the benefit here is that we can use a reference to a function instead of having to call it directly. So let's make a new file. So we're going to duplicate this. I'm going to call it exercise two. We have a new exercise. Okay. Write a method for the farmer. Okay, so the user enters the name of activity a number of times they want to do that activity and then use function pointers to call it. Okay, so I need to write a method, first of all. Uh, and it's not gonna return anything, so we'll make it a void as well. Um, and we need to basically do something repeatedly. So we'll call this repeat activity. I think that's fine. Um, and so the user here is gonna enter the name of something and then we'll use a function pointer to um, use a function pointer to call the activity method the correct number of times. Okay, so the way that we're going to do this is we're going to um, have one method called repeat activity. This one's not going to have any parameters because this is where we ask the user to enter the name and the number of times, which means we need a second function which is called do repeat um, activity. So I guess we'll have one that's get repeat activity and one that's do repeat activity. So this is gonna get us what we need to do. And this one is going to take a, one of the farmer functions, which we'll copy the, the code for that. And it's gonna take an integer uh, times uh, and also we'll need to pass the crop fairly obviously because we added a crop in here. Um, this format is something that you will see a lot if you end up doing any mobile development, which uh, of course is something I've been working in a fair bit uh, as of the last few months. Um, writing every variable on a separate line makes this so much more legible than when you have something that looks like this, and it's actually very hard to tell like what on earth is going on in here. How many parameters does this even have? Here I can quickly tell, oh, there are three parameters. One's called func, one's called crop, one's called time. And I can see that very cleanly, which is a nice thing. So just uh, something that can be helpful once you start having a ton of parameters for a function. So first off, I need to get repeat activity. Boy, farmer, get repeat activity. As always, we'll prompt the user. What activity do you want to do? We'll make that the activity. Um, then we're also going to need a pointer for it. Um, so we're going to need to declare a function pointer. We'll call it act pointer. Uh, and we'll do a switch on the activity. So depending on which activity I have, we'll assign a different um, assign a different value to our activity pointer. So uh, in the case that they pit so, we do one thing. Um, in the case that they pick, uh, what are other ones? Harvest and reap, right? Harvest uh, reap and the default case is output, please um, enter. Uh, I guess we'll say um, 
not a valid um, activity. Can I return from a void function? Can I just write return? I'm actually not sure if I'll be allowed to do that. Um, let's find out if this will compile. Uh, what are we on? ex2.cpp. Uh, uh, yeah, returning is fine. Uh, switch quantity not an integer. Oh, that's problematic. Um, I guess C++ doesn't let me do switches with strings, sadly enough. Okay, well, uh, that's kind of unfortunate. Because um, what I would like to do is try to map the... Oh, maybe that's what we'll do. Let's use a map. That seems good. So here's what we'll do. Is we're going to make a map. And what our map is going to do is it's going to map from strings to function pointers. That sounds juicy. Okay, so we're going to have a map that maps from strings to um, fun, uh, farmer function pointers, and it's called activity map. Is that valid? Can I do that? Map does not name a type. Um, gotta remind myself how maps work. So let's pop back over to C++ to double check the map syntax. Um, <laughs> map syntax, map syntax. I just want some code that will show me. Uh, yeah, I should be able to do this. Do I need to have SD colon colon map? That shouldn't matter. I think it might be angry about me trying to put a function pointer in. Oh no, I need to include map. That would help. <laughs> Let's include map. Okay, still angry. Uh, argument two is invalid um, because I gave it the name function, but it doesn't need a name. It just needs to be a farmer function. Aha, okay. Now, in our constructor, which we need to write, we are going to make a farmer constructor. And in our farmer constructor, we are going to put in our map all of the um, names of our activities. So um, our activity map of so is going to be um, at farmer so. And the same thing for harvest and for reap. So now I have a map that maps from strings to function pointers, which will help me with this next part. Is this okay? Can I do that? Everything seems okay. Great. Now that I have my map, my activity map here, I can make my repeat activity stuff really, really nice. So I don't need this anymore. Um, but what I do need is to get how many times I want to do it. Do you want to activity? Uh, we'll put some error checking in here shortly to make sure that they put in an invalid uh, activity, but for now we'll assume they put in a correct one. Uh, oh, I should probably read in their uh, <laughs> their activity. Okay, so I need um, times. Read in the times. Um, and then we will call our function. Uh, and so in order to do this, we're going to need to write the following. This arrow, and instead of star function, I want star activity map of activity. Uh, and I need a uh, crop. So I still need a crop here. as parameter crop. Is this valid syntax? Yes. Okay. Interesting. 
let's make sure this works. Okay, Alice hurries a couple times when I run this, so that's fine. Let's now see what happens if I tell Alice, um, or sorry, no, uh, I not only want to do it once, but I want to do it a number of times. Let's make sure I do it the right number of times. I is zero, I less than times, I plus plus, and do this the right number of times. Okay, let's have Alice get repeat activity for um, core. What other activity do I want to do? So, how many times do I want to? So, four. Psych fault. Okay, that's a problem. <laughs> what about a psych fault? Um, probably what I would imagine is happening here is it is not finding the activity. Um, and I think the reason for this is that when I read in the activity, it's not actually getting um, the, um, the value of harvest or reap or sow. So I need to figure out how to fix that problem. And I think this is a case of converting strings to different types. So here's what we're going to do um, is uh, C string. Uh, I'm not a robot. Uh, C++ 11. Okay, it doesn't seem to matter. Um, so I need a C string copy of the string, which means I need to run str copy. Um, so first I need a, okay, I need both of these actually. So I'm gonna steal some code. Okay, my issue right now is when I call activity map of activity, it's not finding what I'm looking for. So that's a problem. What I need to do is I need to do the following. I need a, um, and I'll write a little note here because this is unusual code that I did not write myself, so I'm gonna comment it. So convert the activity string into a C string so I can use maps, use a map. Because I think that's what's happening here. Um, which means, okay, so I have a character pointer, C string, which is the type that I'm looking for, and it's going to have the space for the string plus one more character, which if you remember, represents the end of the string. Um, and I'm going to copy the string into that. Uh, and here, instead of str, I want the activity. And here we put the C string. Let's see if that compiles. String copy was not declared because I probably need another library, which is C string. Go, let's try that again. Everything seems okay. I wanna sew, three times. So I can fall again, okay, that sucks. <laughs> Why is this happening? Probably why this is happening is it's not able to correctly get what I'm looking for. Because uh, it's messing up here. Uh, and I can tell that as I can put a message in here is, you know, um, in the loop. And this will write in the loop once, I think, before failing. Oops. So three times in the loop and then it fails. Okay, so I'm still at the problem where um, when I when I try to access the activity map, it doesn't have what I'm looking for. Okay, um, let's try the following. So I wanna see if my, I really wanna be able to use this map. I feel like this map thing is like pretty handy. I think if I move this star, I'll be mad. Let's find out. Oops, did not mean to do that. Yeah, it's quite mad. So this needs to have that star. Um, we're gonna try to figure out how to use a map to get a function pointer. Um, mm -hmm. 
So I feel like this is a really good thing to have working if we can do it. Um, but I'm going to have to figure it out uh, live, because that's the most fun way to do it, isn't it? Um, <laughs> okay. Let's see if um, map will help us at all. Is there something I've done wrong with the map? So I've declared my map, I assigned things to it. Maybe I need to do something differently. Maybe I'm not, maybe I need to, um, to, hmm. see I wanna be able to just access, uh, is it, it first? Let's verify that my map has worked correctly. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to output what's in the map. Uh, and I think we can do that with some of the code that's here. So for each thing in the map, print out what's there. This is some testing code we'll get rid of later. Um, but here my, my um, iterator is of the same type as my activity map. Could be the case that I don't want a string here and I want something else. Um, we'll, we'll see, but for now, let's fix this. So this is a hideous looking piece of code, isn't it? Um, I don't need the std colon colon because I've already included that namespace, so I can get rid of that. Um, and my map is called activity map. So for, um, oh, and I don't think I'm supposed to have double triangle brackets, so have single, there we go. So here's my map type iterator, it's my iterator. Go through from the start to the end, incrementing through and output what's in the map. Let's see what happens. I want to sew five times. Failed immediately. That's interesting because it means that there's another problem here. When I, I didn't get to the in the loop like I did before, which means actually there's a problem with my map, not a problem with the way that I'm accessing it later down the line. And that's good to know because that means this code isn't wrong necessarily. It means that something up here is probably wrong. So this is done correctly. And you know what? I think I might know what it is. Maybe it's the, it could be that the farmer constructor hasn't been called and that would cause things not to be assigned properly. So let's try to make Alice a new farmer. And maybe this will help us fix our problem. Well, we're gonna put our activity back and we're gonna see if that was it. I want to sew five times. Ho, ho, ho. Okay, let's get rid of this excess code. We didn't need this. This was all a, a red herring, as they call it. Uh, look at this magic now. Um, oh, I guess I, I wrote a do repeat activity that I didn't actually use. We can, we can get rid of that. Um, do repeat activity. I think I was going to, I was planning to use my do repeat activity to call get repeat activity, but I don't need to do that. Let me just do the repeat activity. Okay, but look look at how much shorter this code is than if I had to write a switch statement or an if statement to try and you know iterate through and say, okay, if it's so, do this one, if it's, let's do this one. Instead, all I have to do is this. When I make a farmer, I need to create a little map that tells the farmer, uh, tells anybody using the farmer class, hey, if you have the word sow, it's the sow function. If you have the word reap, it's the reap function. If you have the word harvest, it's the harvest function. Great. This is set up for me to use later if I need to reference these strings for some reason. Now, when I want to do an activity a bunch of times, I can say what one I want, type it as a string. I can say how many times I want to do it. And then in a simple loop, I can say, call that activity getting it from my map on the crop that I'm using. Boom. Let's try it again, just for fun. Uh, I want to reap uh, seven times, uh, reaping corn seven times. Look at all that corn I got, isn't that nice? So isn't that much, much cleaner, much more exciting uh, than 
you know, using annoying if statements and stuff because having, you know, if it's so, call this function, if it's read, call this function, just looks hideous. Uh, but instead, my do repeat activity is so short. Uh, I don't have to really do much at all. And I can even maybe put this in a separate piece of code elsewhere that actually retrieves the information from the user and then passes it all to a function that's just really, really, really simple. But um, this is our second exercise. So much, so much nicer than what we had before. Okay, uh, let's move on to our final exercise and then we can call it. Using a lambda function, which I've not used yet, write a program that takes from the command line a vector of strings that are the names of activities and calls the appropriate farmer method for each string. This is so much easier now that we have our map, uh, which is really nice. So over here, I'm gonna duplicate our exercise. Everything is really satisfying when it comes together. Hopefully you can experience the same thing, uh, getting your own code to work. Okay, we're gonna use a lambda function, right? Um, that takes from command line a vector that the names of activities and then calls the appropriate farm method for each string. So uh, we're gonna see, maybe I can use a little bit of a, um, a little coding hack here. I think that might help. So here's what we're gonna do is, um, okay, so now I need a stuff from command line. So I need argc character, uh, Array arc b. Okay, uh, four. I is one. I is less than arg c. I plus plus. So I go through each of my arguments. Now, I also want a lambda function. So a lambda function is essentially a function I'm writing in the middle of the program. Uh, normally, you know, if I try to write like void thing here, uh, C++ will be mad at me. But it turns out you can write a function. We'll use our little auto keyword that I tried to use earlier uh, to much failure. And instead what we're gonna do is we're going to write a function here, which is um, do activity, a very short one. And it's gonna have some components to it. So first off, it's going to need to have um, things that it's saving from the current code. So in this case, I want to pass it, for instance, uh, let's pass it a, um, let's try passing it nothing. I think it will fail, and then we can come back later and see what we can do with that. Um, but for this do activity function, what I want to do is, um, so my function is going to be void. I don't really need to do anything with it. Um, and what, uh, actually, do I need to specify it's void here? Um, no, I don't think I do. Always the, the, um, the parameters here get really messy sometimes. So I believe this is what it's capturing from the current code. This is the parameters that it's using. And then this is what it actually does. So what I need is I need to have a, um, I need a string. Because what I want to do is be able to take all the strings that someone's typed into command line and run the right function for them. Uh, I'm going to come back to this in a bit because someone's popped on my office hours, but I will return in a moment for you. Okay, sorry for the cut. Uh, let's continue what we were doing. So trying to make a Lambda function. It is called do activity. It is going to capture, at the moment, nothing. Um, there is a list you can look up. Uh, I think it's actually in our course notes of all the things that you can pass to this Lambda function from where you're calling it. And I think the list is somewhere in the middle here. Yes, so in these square brackets, you can decide what you want to capture. In other words, what sorts of information do you need to give in order for this to work? And so uh, some of the most common ones include um, the ampersand, which means any variables that you're passing over need to be sent by reference in case you want to make modifications. Equals, meaning you want to send copies of any variables that are gonna be involved. Um, you may want to pass this, meaning you're putting this, um, it might be the case that you're putting a Lambda function inside a class, and then you want to write this, uh, or you know, so on and so forth. Or you could just pass a single variable in some cases. So in this case, I want to probably pass actually a single variable with a copy. And the, the variable I want to pass is actually going to be our farmer. So I'm going to pass Alice to our Lambda function. Now our Lambda function, is also going to need to have a, um, is going to need to take a string, 
uh, which is our activity. Uh, and what it's going to do is it's going to use the same thing we have over here, which is call the activity. Uh, this time we'll, we'll put in a, we'll put in the crop. So um, Alice arrow activity map, because she has an activity map, with the activity, and we're going to give it, let's say, um, some more rhubarb. I'm a good rhubarb fan. OK, and I think this should compile. Let's try. OK, seems like it's fine. So I have written a function called doActivity. It requires Alice, <laughs> who is in our main function. It takes as a parameter our string called activity. And here is the code for our function, which I could put on a separate line if I really want, um, which is to call Alice's, use Alice's activity map to find out what she's going to do and do it with some rhubarb. Now, the reason I want to do this is because now, with all of the information I've been passed by the, um, by the command line, I can do all of those things. So maybe I want to sow, maybe I want to reap, maybe I want to harvest, right? And so for each one, I want to um, do activity of um, that acti of uh, what is it? Arg v i. So now when I run this, we're going to pass it reap, sow, sow, harvest, just for fun. I want to harvest first, uh, let's say 10 times. Okay, I harvested 10 times and it didn't do the rest. So that's a problem, which means something went wrong. Let's find out. Ah, because I'm, call I'm compiling the wrong code. That would probably help. Uh, activity map was not declared in the scope. Did I mean activity? Hmm, that's a problem. So, um, <laughs> I think my issue here is, so, um, I think I need um, Alice's activity map. Let's see if that works. Okay, so here was my mistake. Writing this as such indicates I want to, from Alice, access a function using an activity map mapped to an activity. Sounds a little confusing, maybe <laughs> replay the audio, but okay, what's the problem here? So the problem here is that I have my farmer Alice, great. I have functions I can call with Alice, but I need to get this activity map. Activity map is not a variable declared in main. Activity map is a variable declared in Alice. So I need to get her activity map, use that to get the activity, sowing, harvesting, so on, and then um, have her call that function. My code is getting messier than anything we've ever seen. Uh, sorry, there was eight other. So reap, sow, so harvest. I want to uh, harvest six times. So I harvest my corn six times, I reap rhubarb, I sow rhubarb twice, and I harvest rhubarb as well. Look at that, isn't that magical? I was able, to, now this code may look sort of, you know, messy in the sense that there's all kinds of parentheses all over the place and brackets and braces, but only one time do I have to write this do activity function, which I put right in here. It takes Alice as a parameter, it takes an activity, and it runs the code with rhubarb. When I want to do this activity, I only need to call do activity with the string that I'm passing, and that's it. This code is so short, yet it is able to access my farmer, go into the functions that are there that correspond with the strings that I put in, and call each of those ones in order. I don't think that we've been able to do that other than having a ton of if statements before. So, you know, removing a, tons of if statements or switches makes our code look a lot cleaner and shorter. So um, that I think wraps up our video for today. Uh, we did a little bit of experimenting, you know, it was a bit of a rocky start trying to find our footing, but 
Uh, we went through lots of different errors that you might run into if you're trying to learn how to use Lambda functions and function pointers. And I think that really the best way for you to get comfortable with it is try doing some of these exercises. Um, it's okay if you messed up doing these exercises. I did too. Uh, and I had to you know, figure out how do I do all of these different things. But now that you know how to do them, try doing some of your own. Try making your own class. Don't make it a farmer. Um, make it something else. Make it, um, have a, have an art class. You know, we had a, a class earlier. We had art, visual art, uh, music, and so on. Try using some of those classes together uh, and pass it, maybe pass some functions between them. Maybe see if you can make it so there's a function um, appreciate that you can pass from one function to another. So I can appreciate both a, um, a movie and a book uh, in the same or different ways, you know, give, give some options. Uh, I think you do need to practice with this to get really a handle on it. Um, you know, I feel more comfortable, of course, now that I've coded it, but you won't feel comfortable just watching what I've done. You'll feel more comfortable when you have coded it as well. So give it a shot. Uh, I think it will be worth the time. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in class. Bye-bye.